Marquette, they call it EGB, that energy generating behavior. Tonight on campus, EGB isn't just the players' credo, it's a students only affair, bringing the noise to the Al McGuire Center as Central Michigan pays a visit to Milwaukee to face the Marquette Golden Eagles. Greetings, everybody. Bob Brainerd in a very noisy building here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, along with the former head coach, Lavelle Jordan. Shaka Smart's team got off to an opening night victory on Monday night. Ten-point victory, but you coaches are all the same. Even in a win, you find something wrong. Shaka says we got to clean some things up. Yeah, Bob, they want to clean up the 18 turnovers from game one. Obviously, Shaka wants to take care of the ball better than that with his team. And then also... They were the number two three-point shooting team in the conference last year and made threes per game. They didn't shoot the ball well, made five threes in game one. So they really want to get better shots, right, and be able to step up and knock some of those open shots down. The starting five for each side. It's our Jeep starting lineup brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. This Chippewa squad, they got some big bodies, but they're very young. Ten new players. And for Marquette, well, no more Justin Lewis, no more Daryl Morcel. So the scoring has to come from, well, Shaka says, more scoring by committee. Don't have everybody just try to do more than they should. Everybody try to up their scoring mark a little bit at a time. It's a whiteout here in Milwaukee. Players wearing the white. Students cramming the L tonight. They love their downtown facility, Pfizer Forum, but why not? Students only? Let them bring the noise. Chippewas, their first game of the season. They're the traveling burgundy with the gold trim. They did have an exhibition back home at Michigan, but now it's the real thing under the bright lights here at the Yale. Head coach Tony Barbie in his second season trying to improve on a 7-23 and 23 rookie year campaign. He likes the pieces LaBelle that he has for this chip squad. Yeah, I think the freshman, Reggie Bass, who led them in scoring in the exhibition game. Uh, no Reggie, we had a little bit of interaction with him in the recruiting circuit. He's really talented, really poised for his age. Somebody to, to look for early here. This is Kevin Boopy Miller with the basketball. Boopy's his nickname, but he says, call me Kevin, and we will. Miller, leading scorer from a year ago. They'll count on him to fill it up. High volume shooter. So is Reggie Bass. The three doesn't go, but a reload. Miller thought about it. And that's a concern for Shaka, the glass. We talked about their size when we had shoot around. And Central Michigan's ability on the backboards, they're going to have to do a good job putting the body on the body every time a shot goes up. Oh, so. Egator, the floater. That's one guy, Val, that you expect big things here at Marquette and also ready to take that next step. Yeah, I'm excited about his opportunity this season. He's 6'10". He can handle the basketball on the perimeter. He can drive it, dribble handoff, and, and, and what Shaka wants to do and keep the floor spread and open. Evie Mitchell. The give to Prosper. Omax in strong. Hits the deck to the line. He goes. Another guy whose ceiling has to increase this year at Omax. All these guys, in fact, Val, are looking to take that jump. Do a little bit more, as Shaka said, by committee. It all adds up to a good effort. Yeah, I think when you look at the returners, uh, the five guys that are out combined coming back average 26 points a game. You know, Justin Lewis and Darrell Marcel could get that together on one night. So for all of these guys to take a little bit of a step forward. This is the first is Prosper. Certainly a defensive, disruptive presence a year ago. Now he wants to be that violent driver to the hoop. You saw it there during the contest. Yeah, I think if he can do that, Bob, and then really, really become a, a, uh, a force on the offensive glass for them, you know, he can contribute and get some, some easy basket second possession. Little lock the freebies. On the drive, Taylor. Push, steam shovels it in for two. We're tied at two. Taylor came off the bench in their exhibition, but he's getting the nod here. Experienced him a year ago from the chips. Colin, baseline stuck, but he finds the open man. That's the Godaro. Tyler Colette as a passer. 
the best probably passer vision uh, in the Big East Conference. He had nine assists in the exhibition game. Just does an extremely well, good job of seeing the court. He's an elite assist man on the basketball floor. This is Bass. Interior feed. There's one of the bigs. Put it on the deck, but nowhere to go. Yes. Then another big underneath. That was Marcus Harding. And there's your offensive board again, Valdez. And there's, there, that, that is something that they're going to address. Because that's something Coach Smart really emphasized with his team as shoot around. In the corner, five to shoot. Pavret cross court to Taylor. Launches. No. And track down by Prosper. Omax the other way to Mitchell. Stevie Mitchell in the corner. And the whistle and the charge called on Mitchell. Yeah, and I think you, what you said earlier, Bob, guys not trying to do too much. They need to be more aggressive. Everybody has to elevate their offense. Uh, and Stevie Mitchell did that in the first game. He took 10 shot attempts. Look, last year, I don't know that he would have got 10 shot attempts taken. But being able to be under control with the aggression. And line violation, Miller... Yeah, he, he, moved, he was running the baseline on the inbounds pass, which is illegal. You can do that after a made basket only. A good call there by official Claire Aubrey. Claire Aubrey, James Breeding, Lamar Simpson, our officials. And as Polak drives, you've got Miller making the miscue, and then they'll call Harding, however. That's two on Marcus. So here comes quick sub. For the chips, in comes Carrington, the Caskill, number four. And we'll see Carrington is one of the better athletes in the MAC conference. Transferred from Florida Atlantic, went to junior college, and now he's here with Coach Barbie. And he really, really is excited about his athleticism and what he can do. Caskill still some length, but not the throw. As the triple for Jones rims off. And some chatter. Omax whistled for the foul going after the loose change. And, and I'm just based on what he has to do for them to be good about, I'm okay with him being aggressive on the offensive glass. Now, obviously, he's got to, what he wants to do there is, is spin or make a swim move, but it's something that he, they need from him. And so there's acceptable fouls in the game, and that, that would go in that category in my book. David Joplin in from our tip, along with Sean Jones. 22 on the ball against Miller. And kick ball there off of Polek. Keep your eye on 22. Jones is, well, Shaka says he's the fastest player I've ever coached in my career. Any team, anytime, anywhere, Jones is lightning quick and a disruptive force. He is, I was going to say, he fits. Shaka, smart basketball perfectly. His aggression on defense, his ability to get up and crawl into the ball. Somebody the coach is really excited about. Pass up top to Miller. Works the screen. Backdoor look and the jam by Brian Taylor. Oh, that was Taylor made. Great pass there by Kevin Miller. He had 139 assists as a freshman last year. Polak drive and kick. Camp Jones didn't pull the trigger. There's Sean Jones. Land the Giants. Kolak, Joplin, three, bucket. Another assist from Tyler and David Joplin off the bench, feeling it early. Great extra pass by Kolak. Bump along the baseline in front of the Marquette bench. Tight quarters here at the Allen Camp Jones. Whistle for the foul. Now, great job getting on balance there. The one more pass, David Joplin for three. But a really, really, that worked because of Sean Jones' ability to get in the paint and be under control. Something that they were emphasizing that shoot around to try to avoid as many turnovers as they had in game one. So, extending the defense. Miller works around it, kicks it. The Cascade wins it. Kolek seen the floor to Jones. Look at this. Spin and kick. Kolak drive and thrown away. Good idea, but turnover Marquette. Yeah, and Tyler wants you to do this again. That's two round emphasize the playing off two feet. 
Uh, you saw Sean Jones do it, a possession beforehand. If Tyler does the same thing there, he can probably make a, make a completion on that play. Chip just two of seven from the field her, here early on. They talked about Bob Central Michigan feeling them defensively. They wanted to pick up the pressure. Sean Jones obviously helps that cause when he subs into the game, but they really wanted to apply a little more pressure on the ball so that they could get out in transition. Joplin again. Book it again. And me mugging to his fellow students here at the L. Oh, strong, right into the paint, and kiss it off the window for two. Brian Taylor, six, Marquette, ten, and Joplin has six of the ten. Turnover, trying to cash in, no. Tipped around, Kolek out of the scrum. Ahead to Chase Ross. Bam! Oh, my goodness. This young man, those two freshmen, Chase, Chase Ross, Sean Jones, they fit Shaka Smart perfectly. Aggressive, physical, athletic. He stepped up in the, in the first game and had a great game one. Job yes, and a foul! On the touchdown pass from Kolek. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. Now you're going to have to speak up. Beautiful. Because this place is all crazy go nuts here in milwaukee to the line when we come back 10-2 run by the golden eagles they lead it 14-6 back here at the al on the campus of Marquette university david joplin off the bench out of the shoot with a purpose foul. yeah he's he's trying to he's having a bounce back game from game one he was over five in that game Coach Smart's high on David Joplin's ability to score the basketball and step up as one of those guys. He's three for three here out of the gates, but you can tell he's got the mindset to come out and, Im and prove that he can be that guy that Coach Smart wants him to be. Shaka told us that someday, emphasis, someday, he could lead the Big East in scoring. Not yet, but someday. And how that happens, he says, it's all up to him. He's got the talent in his belly. And what he does with the minutes when he's given the minutes, and he'll get more this year, that's up to him. But sky's the limit when your coach is saying things like that. Yeah, and look, we recruited David Joplin. We, we were pretty in deep with him. I know his, his, his dad, Howard, his mom, Lisa. That is what we were excited about, his ability, his size, his skill. Uh, he's got winning DNA. He's a state champion as a sophomore here at Brookfield Central in Wisconsin. So a lot to be excited about for this young man coming into this season. And, of course, Shaka recruited him when he was at Texas. And when Coach Smart made the move here to Milwaukee, he had to call David and say, you coming with? And you see Marquette here picking up the pressure. Again, something that was emphasized. They didn't feel like they did a good job of applying pressure in game one. Oh, nice step back. Jesse Zarzua. Coppin State transfer really high on this young man. He's a scorer. He was a highly sought after transfer in the transfer portal this offseason. Scored almost 15 points a game at Coppin State last year. Joplin again, no. Hard up the side of the rim. Here's the push by Miller. Bumps into Cola and contact, but just OB off of Marquette. Outstanding job there by Cola of walling up without fouling. Cam Jones returns for the Golden Eagles. Tyler gets a breather. Zarzua on the inbound of McCaskill. Handed off to Miller on the curl. He lost his footing. Here goes Jones the other way. Jones to Roth. Underneath, no. Who put him to have it? Back the other way, the chip was in there with the ball. For a moment was Max Marley. Recognize the last name? You should. His dad played at Central Michigan back in the day. Thunder Dan. Thunder Dan. We're dating ourselves, Val, but I don't care. His dad, spectacular. First round draft pick of the Phoenix Suns. And Max, only a freshman, a true freshman. Kid with a lot of talent. 
I talk, the play where his, where his daddy played yeah. back in the day. I'm a Michigan native, so I talked to Max before. At, uh, earlier today and asked him how he got the number 44 because that's dad's old retired number uh, he said he wanted 55 but they talked him into it so he had to call to get dad's permission max's first college shot no rimmed off and camp jones loose change the other way head on a swivel to ross turned that one down he had a good look chase hits the pick three coming ross to the line second and Ross I mean standing next to Jones looks sort of slow but he's got wheels too quick to the ball bell yeah, you gotta be able to contest there without fouling you know coach Barbie's talking to Kevin Miller about that right now getting out to their shooters but doing so without putting them on the line the question now will he leave Kevin Miller in with two you know, some coaches diff some coaches go by rule on that Bob you get two fouls, you're on the bench the rest of the half. Uh, some coaches, are, it's a little bit of a feel. Uh, for me, you have to know your player. And can you trust them in there with two fouls not to pick up that third? Coach Barbie, Coach Barbie leaving him in right now at the moment. No, no, there he goes. And no one has to see That's a big loss. Yeah, you're and talking the... the, the you know, the, 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 stir, the, the stick that stirs the drink there with Kevin Miller. Absolutely. One more coming for Ross. Shaka calls him a dude and just leaves it at that. I got love this kid. Physicality, aggression, but under control. He's got, he's got a maturity about him for a young player. He kept turning the heat up in the backcourt. Now, without Kevin Miller in the game, can Central Michigan take, can they take, take on this pressure? Zula launching and hitting. Well, the average almost 15 a game at Coppin State. Not afraid to pull the trigger. First three for the Chips. Flying in and Nicodaro out. Oh. He got the bucket, got but I think we had some extracurricular. Now, bench warning. Zula, the lob, too much on it. Yeah, you can see they miss Miller. You can see when he's in their foul, how under control they are. Zarzula's quick, but a little too quick that time. Yeah, and he's more of a scorer. Yeah, that's his role. The, um, coach likes him coming off the bench. Sixth man, firepower off the bench role. And now playing that backup point position. Sean Jones, pretty scoop. Off the window for two. And one coming at the strike. Can't coach quickness, coach. It, this kid, the blow by. And I think Central Michigan out on the court that far away, extending their defense. The quickness of Marquette may expose that to something they might want to pull off just to contain, especially with Kevin Miller on the bench right now. Foul is on Marley. More changes here from Marquette. Ben Gold is in, the freshman from New Zealand. The Big East Conference, get used to Sean, get used to saying the name Sean Jones. He'll remind you, Bob, of Posh Alexander. He's got a lot of those qualities. Tough, hard nosed, leader, fearless. He gets a breather. Mitchell back in. Marquette bench exploding with 16. Guys coming in, coming to play. Mitchell harassing Sarzua, almost caught the P.O. Back in the hands of Jesse. Now stuck up top to Marley. Taylor, diamond kick off his knee, another turnover by the Chips. This is what, this is what Coach Smart wants. Pick up the pressure, create more possessions. You can look at it on film. I know you saw it on film, but when the pressure is on the court, it's a different animal, isn't it, Bell? It, it is, and and obviously to be able to handle it, the boys and just get a shot on the rim right now. Central Michigan with their, their fifth turnover of the game, but it's not just the turnover. 
It's playing at a pace you don't want to play at. Ben Gold almost followed the miss with a jam dunk from down under. Look at Prosper out, out top guard, the point guard. Yeah, big playing like guard. Comfortable for him. Zarzua drives over Prosper, missed everything. Okay. Mitchell the other way. Trying to look for someone leaking out, but no one home. So Stevie goes to work. Mitchell, drive, scoop, and blocking foul. Good call. Good call. Good call. It'll go against Reggie Bass. Right now, a lot going against Central Michigan and Marquette. Feeling it early in front of all the folks on campus. Sharing is caring, and it all starts with that kid. Look, one of the best passers in the Big East. It's something that Coach Smart emphasizes, giving up good for great. They were second in the Big East Conference last year in assists per game, average 16. They had 18 assists the other night in the first game. The problem was they had 18 turnovers. So right now, was with Tyler, he's got five out of their six assists, and they only have three turnovers. So they've heard Coach's message the last couple days. There's Mitchell to the stripe. DV 11 on Monday night in the win over Radford. And he's a kind of a do-it-all guy. He'll, he'll be the guy that people won't recognize enough, what they call underappreciated, but he defends, he drives, he kicks, he makes free throws. Lead is 13. Captain the bonus. Rest of this half, and there's a lot of it left. Does do a four in his plate now. With Miller on the bench. Jesse twisting, turning, kicking for a triple. Halfway down and pops out. Nice block out. Stevie, whistle. Going the other way. They're going to call it Joplin for the screen. Yeah, just a little. You got to get your feet set. Set those screens. Um, people are coasting out of screens, kind of slipping out of them. The job just didn't get set quite set there. Ghosting, huh, though? Yes, yeah, you come up to set the screen and kind of disappear. <laughs> poof, poof. Now, got the T.O. and then got the foul. It'll go against Zarzua. Again, the disruptive on the back side. See the gap there. Everybody, the gap position there by Max. Really good job keeping them out of the lane. In the pressure, but not just the pressure on the ball. It's the other guys. They count and chart deflections here at Marquette. It's a big stat for them. Coach is keeping it. They've got a game goal. They want 30-plus deflections per game. Let's be honest, though. Coach ain't keeping it. He, he's, he's got no. somebody keeping it on the bench. There's, there's but, plenty of human capital over there on the Marquette bench. But, but to your <laughs> point... They've done the research, and when they get 32 or more deflections, they win ball games. So there's a method to the madness, Val. And, and, it, and it creates those energy-giving behaviors. You talked about that activity. Look, I came to a Coach Smart practice earlier uh, last month, and there is no lack of energy in him and in his, in his team and the way they practice. It is, it is on. As soon as you walk in the door, you have to have energy if you're going to play the coach. And yeah, no days off. 9-0 run going on for Marquette. The lead now bumps plus 15. Pass on the wing. Met by Camp Jones. Fadeaway three. No. Omax on the clear. Crossed around the push. To Mitchell launching and hitting. I love, love the way Omax is playing right now. Both ends of the court. The ability for him at his size to be able to rebound, push, and make a decision right, with a great pass. And to your point, Dale, it all starts right up top. Yeah, and you're talking about your 6'8", 230-pound wing, being in position on defense, getting the steal, busting out, leading the break, making a great decision, great pass. Love the spacing there by Stevie Mitchell getting to the corner. 
What an advantage for Marquette and Shaka Smart to have lengthy guys like Prosper, Igadaro, who can also handle the ball, who can play like guards when they need to. It, it, that versatility um, in, in the Big East Conference, when you have players, when you have a group that has that versatility, it usually leads to success. Look, Max, Max, he's, Max, uh, he's Olivier, he's guarding the point guard on one end. Rebounding the ball, pushing the ball, making the decision at 6'8. And he's taking pride in his defense. There are bigs in the Big East who will be bigger than Marquette's big. But the Marquette's big now will cause matchup nightmares, chaos. Coach Barbie now going back with Kevin Miller, his, his trustworthy point guard. Right. Good two fouls, but he needs him back in the tight. Yeah, just the run is ridiculous, as you can see. No choice. Miller back in there with the basketball. Baseline drives the kid. Sarzu are now. Doesn't have to handle the rock as much. Miller looks around the screen. Floater. And almost touched That's by the Casco. That's why you shoved that young man back in the game. You've got a poise. You can handle the pressure. Here by Miller to attack even with the two fouls. Chaplin cut off from the very swing Marquette. Mitchell on the wing. Eight to shoot. Chaplin. Miller right there. Fade away goes in the paint for David. Well done. Well done. On balance, off two feet. Great pivot. Natural scoring ability this, this kid had. Why Shaka made the ceiling comment on leading the confidence in scoring someday because you can see how he scores in bunches. Miller. Pass Mitchell floor. This time it was meant to be a lob and they can't finish, but you see how much of a different team Central Michigan is when Kevin Miller's in the game. Completely. Pavret will go to the line. We're gonna dial it back, Val. To the last time when Miller drives, was there contact? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a close one. I, it was, I think it was a pass. Was it in the cylinder as he clutched it? It was a pass that might have gone in the basket. If you were coaching on my guest bench, you'd be going nuts, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I've had a few conversations with Lamar Simpson and James Bridges. Have you now? <laughs> you don't say. Healthy conversation. Okay. <laughs> Nico Pavret added 30 pounds in the offseason. And again, this is a big sophomore kid out of France. They need his length and his ability. Play there's, defense. There's old Max again. Pollock. Behind the back to Prosper. We're going to handle the rock. Goes up. Squeezes it in. Even with Pagrin all over him. He, he's got, he has his fingerprints all over this basketball game right now. Assists. Attacking drives. Defensively out top, rebounding the basketball. He, he's, he's everywhere. There he is again. Passing lane steal. Oh, man. Okay, young fella. I see you, young fella. Last year, Val, Olivier Maxson Prosper didn't have to score a lot. They had other dudes who were doing that. This year, he wants to score more. Yep. And he talked about, at the walkthrough earlier today, having a comfort. He's bounced around in high school at the high school level. He started at Clemson, ended up here. This is the first year he's returned somewhere in a while. And he's got a comfort with the coaching staff. He knows what they want from him. They've challenged him on both ends of the court. And he's stepping up to the challenge. Yeah, Omax saying so many do-overs. It's like getting the reset button time and time again. Didn't have to do that this season. Little floater. Doesn't go. Boy, Pavret thought it was two. Going the other way. Marquette going the other way. And Omax drops it down again. Mark 
Marquette blowing the roof off the L here in the first half. Three ball. Need it. Don't get it. And then hitting the deck might be Igadoro. With the foul from behind. It'll be against Oso by Marquette. Oso good here in the first half foul. The vision from Tyler Cola, the best assist man in the Big East. In each and every game, for Shaka Smart and company, 32 deflections. They're almost halfway there. And those deflections, sitting in the passing lane, being disruptive, it's causing fast break points, easy points the other way. C critical to the way Coach Smart wants, wants his teams to play. Look, I coached against Coach when, uh, when he was at VCU, then again when he was at Texas, and and, uh, and at Marquette. And early on when he, when he was at Texas, he, he, could, he didn't have the personnel to really apply the pressure the way he wanted to apply it. Obviously, BCU, he was known for havoc. But now this group here, they've got athleticism, they've got speed, they've got length. He's recruited them to fit his style and his brand of basketball. Marquette. Smack dab in the middle of a 22 5 run. That was backdoor disruption by Oso Igadaro. So again, these, these Chippewas, Val, there's a lot of times they think, I got an easy two here. And then something happens on the backside or the front side or baseline underneath. Marquette always contesting at the glass like that. The length and the recovery. Marquette final 11. And here's the thing, Bob. And there, now Tyler getting beat off the dribble. The gap there that we saw from Olivier earlier in the game. Chase Ross there, the freshman, not in the same position, which allowed Central Michigan to get downhill. This is Emil Skyetta, freshman guard out of Helsinki, Finland. They weren't sure if he'd be able to play or not, but he got the green light, got clearance. So coming off the bench for the chips here, late stages of the first half. And yeah, they think he might be their highest IQ player. Uh, obviously developed in the European system. Got a good stroke, good feel for the game. Right now, chips looking for a spark of any sort. But also knowing they got to dig in on the defense. Yes, transition buckets for easy enough look. They're attacking the paint just like that. Then kick it to Kolak for yes. three. The that sweet is stroke is back. And that's something that they need him to shoot the ball with confidence. The Tyler Kolak has a stroke. He shot 35% for three at George Mason before he transferred. Had a, had a down year shoot the ball last year. But for them to make up for the loss, he's got to be able to knock some of those down. Almost a travel, almost a turnover. But Ross instead called for the foul. That's his first. Bonus now for both squads. And Kolick now, I think there's a, a relief for him to be able to play off the ball sometimes. They have two point guards on the court right now, which allows his confidence, his role to change and become a little bit more of a scorer when he and Sean Jones are in the game together. Diana missed the front end. Here comes Kolick. Distributes. Jones. Central Michigan the other way. This is what you love. Switching five rows on, against the pick and roll and also out in the front court. And your pass. These students. Student only light is going crazy. Nigadaro got the steal. Nigadaro got the fancy finish. The flush on the other end. Skyetta, the air ball. Jones, the push. Land the giant. Tolek, three. That's another one. It's Marquette by 30. First things first, Val. 
another deflection, another turnover, and the, then this. The versatility of Oso to get out and push, give it up, give it back. Great decision there by the freshman, Chase Ross. Big time finish by Oso. And then here's that confidence three for Kolek. In, in the off season, in the summer, he went back into the lab. He worked hard on the three-point shooting. He knew, Val, that there was much better shot selection and a more comfortable version of his three-point shot. He, shot. he hit just 28%. That's a big drop from 34 to 28. And he worked at it tirelessly. Didn't want to do it. It's hard. You know this, though. It's hard for shooters to be asked to change a routine, but he did it, and he's starting to already see the payoff. And and I think the ability to not be, be shooting threes off the bounce. When he's a point guard, he's dribbling and shooting dribble threes. Now, you bring in Sean Jones, and he can be the point guard, which allows him to shoot step-in threes and increases their three-point percentage. That's not a typo, folks. It's a 30 to seven mark at one. And for Coach Barbie here, they've got to find a way to just slow down the pace of this game. Good luck, right? It starts with taking care of the basketball. Right? And then if they can get on the offensive glass, that's what Marquette was worried about. Jones on the drive. This time the big hat harassed him. It'll stay with Marquette. But Sean Jones... Good things come in small packages. He shows no fear. He, he's the type of guy. You, you ever had a, you ever seen a gnat at a picnic? I have. I he, hate him. He's one of those just, he's just going to continue to bother you as long as he's been there. Apply pressure. Force the action. Steps taken by Cole. Turnover Marquette. But that stat category tonight tipped in favor of Central Michigan. And the, the chips turnovers have been costly because Marquette says, thank you very much. Scoop, go the other way. Miller still playing with the two fouls. 15-footer rims out. Bullock looking around. Surveying. Cam Jones in the corner. Ball swing to Kolek up top. Three, no. Good lick. Good look for the lengthy kid. Harding. Eyes up a three. Ooh, got the ability to make those. Lost that time. And there, the offensive rebound. So now, an extra possession for Central Michigan. They, they can do that. Slows the game down a little bit. Look, it's just about winning possessions right now for them. Right? They're down big. You just want to win possession by possession and emphasize the things that you want to be about if you're Coach Barbie. Going to the glass is one of those things for them. Got to do it. Just a second made three by the chip. The rim ate up that. Good shot by Sean Jones. And... Okay. Grand line ball. Shot was just helping him out. That's what coaches do. You can verify that. Every now and again. Every now and again. Another T.O. on Central Michigan as Reggie Bass returns. They're going to give Miller a breather here. No, did his part. Didn't get that third foul, but you got to be careful here, and Tony Barbie will. Here's the thing right now, Bob, is that Marquette has 45 points on the board. We've mentioned a lot of names, and we have not called Cam Jones as one of those names. That we got it. And he's there leading returning score. Triple. Doesn't go for Prosper. Breaking pass. Breaking traffic. Jones Woods on every step of the way. On the curl. On the drive. And contact on the drive. It'll go against Gold. It is. However, Marquette, good as gold. Cliche, yeah, but true. Uh-huh. They're at 25 here in the first half. Marquette by a whole bunch here in Milwaukee in the first half. Coming up on the Chief Halftime Report. Mike Hill, Bill Rafferty.
Jim Jackson, Casey Jacobson. They'll preview the Marquette season. We're seeing some of it play out in front of us tonight. And we'll look at the first half highlights and stats as well. That's all coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. Hands up, Marquette 17. And what, you, what you want right here if you're, if you're Coach Barbie is you're talking about four-minute battles in the in the huddle there, right? Stop not not worrying about the score. Just focusing in on the last four-minute battle and see if you can win that heading into the locker room at halftime. On the other side with Coach Mark, we just want to keep the pressure on. He's seeing exactly what he wants from his team. And now it's no let-up, right? Continue to focus on the next possession, play Marquette basketball the way he wants to play it. Fell fun with numbers. Central Michigan has actually shot one more than Marquette has shot. 27 attempts, Marquette 26. You never know it. Marquette, of course, more efficient in attacking the rim. Hence, with the big lead. Joplin, oh, he thought about it and just couldn't pull the trigger. And he went inside, and there was all kinds of chip wood. And then the bounce speed, a little panic there by David. Yeah, and, and sometimes as, as a player, when you get up big, it's hard to, to play that way. You just got to play, play, play the game the same way you've been playing. Job there, passed up an open look. You just got to continue to play your way. Don't worry about the score. You start thinking about, you know, should I take this one? Is it too early? But if you're open, shoot open shots. I know that's what coach wants him to do. And he was open. Jack upon the floor. Players do the same. Students love it. Miller attacking, scooping and scoring. No bright spot is Kevin Miller tonight. Foul trouble or not. Talented, talented young player. The second team. All conference pick in the back preseason. Rightfully so. And you see there, Max uh, Olivier has been doing a really good job of keeping them in front for the most part. But he's so low, got his shoulder to his hip, get downhill, and a nifty finish around the rim. Miller led the chip was last year in almost every category. I mean, you just pick one, and he was the man. Gets the foul there, however, Val. So that's three on Miller. And, and, and that's the risk you take. And I think for him, he has to be able to learn how to play with two. It's a big, a big trust. Uh, a big, a big uh, trust moment there for Coach to put him back in the game with two fouls. Trust him. You would have liked for them to get a little bit closer so he could get him back out before picking up the third. Um, but the pressure from Marquette hadn't allowed that to happen. This is Miller to the bench. Marley in for him. The Marquette lead is 21 here. 2.50 to go before halftime. Taylor and now again Zarzua running the show for the chips. Mitchell in his grill. Three to two. Got a lot. Great possession defensively. Look. So Marquette right now is switching five ways against the against the on-ball screen, the pick and roll. The mobility that they have with Oso and Olivier Max Prosper, that is something that's going to provide them elite levels to keep guards in front, to protect the paint, to force shot clock violations like they just did, to get out and transition defensively. Really impressed by the way their bigs move their feet. Prosper turnover, number 10 on the shot clock violation. Mitchell in the blender. And the payoff. Just solid. Right? Pump, solid pump fake. Playing off two feet once he got to the paint. He's just a solid player. Taylor, pull up. Floater good. Marquette, I mean, you blink. And they're already in the front court. Omax, corner. Uh-uh. Get Igatauro with the contact going after the loose change. That's two on Oso.
Double bonus. That's the way here. With a buck 38 to go before the break. Coach will get Oso out of the game here with two. And play a little small ball, it looks like, with no true center in the game. See, there's the case, Bell. Would you trust Oso to stay in there for you know, a little over a minute and a half and not pick up the third? If, if the score was closer, maybe, but with a minute and 38 left, there's no reason to risk it. Right. This was earlier in the half, 10 minutes to go. Maybe you got a decision to make there, but right now, 1.30 on the clock, just sitting down, going to halftime, safely. he's got three fouls in the second half to spare. So you survey the landscape as a coach, and then you survey your player. Who is it that you're going to trust to say, all right, you can stay out there, but don't get your third. It's all about exactly. And it's happening all, in front of you. And it's time score and situation. Right? Up 21, a minute 30 to go. Come have a seat, young fella. We'll talk about what you did in the locker room. And he'll be ready to go in the second half. But Brett got the friendly roll here on the road. Split the free throw. It's still marked at 520. Ross. Joplin this time. Didn't get his feet set that time. He did not. Another one, Marley from the baseline connects. Max Marley, timeout Marquette. Timeout Marquette. Good job on the offensive glass there by Nicholas Labrette. That's 59 seconds to go here now. So coach is just talking about there's a chance here for Marquette to go two for one if they choose to. I don't know, you know, up 21, if that's a situation. So these games, when you have a situation like this, especially early in the season, it allows you to look at your rotations. I think they're getting a great uh, contribution off their bench. Coaches ask the guys to step up. But then it also allows you to look at some situations. So right here, 59 seconds to go, possible two-for-one situation. Marley gained that last bucket. As oh, Iggy working hard here. Offensive rebounds. This is one area. You clearly see that here in the first half. That the Chippewas have used that length of their advantage. They've got reloads foul to give them second chance, even third chance opportunities. Not always able to cash in. And but yep. it's an area that they can build upon. And if it's uh, one thing for Marquette. That was a, a, a Achilles heel from last year. It was rebound. They were one of the bottom in, in Ken Palm on both sides of the ball. Offensively and defensive rebounding. Got the seven points off the second chance opportunity. And in the middle of a run here to slice this down underneath 20. And Igadaro tried the hook shot. Ryan Taylor hooked him for the foul. He has a unique skill set for somebody that's 6'9". He's got length, mobility, but his ability. He didn't start as a center. He was a wing when he was younger and grew. But he still has the ability to handle the basketball. We've seen him earlier in the half with the ball up top, using the screen, coming off the pick and roll as the ball handler. Yeah, he very, a, very unique. He was a point guard, Val, in AAU. So even though he grew, he still tucked that away, part of his arsenal, and Shaka Smart wants to see him use more of that. Handle the ball. We won't yell at you. We want you to use that skill set to your advantage. No free throws there, so the lead remains the blue team. Chippewas can't catch in. And hold here for the last one. Look at Smart. Tyler Kolek looking over at his coach, seeing what he wants here for the last shot. Message sent. Kolek, message received. And it's Prosper with Rock. Up top with nine. Look at this. The center up top. Big on small, pick and roll. 
Golick for three. Hard off the heel. And that'll do it. So Marquette flying out of the gates here at the Al McGuire Center. Rolling the scoreboard up. Central Michigan cobbling together a run late here to get it underneath 20. So a half of basketball, folks. We shall see what happens. Halftime coming your way. It's Marquette 47, Central Michigan 29. Oh, oof. When we return. How to be young again. See if the crew here at the Al has 20 more minutes of basketball in them. I think they do. They brought the noise here in the first half. Helping the lead. Marquette to an 18-point lead. In the first 20 minutes, our halftime stats brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. Shaka Smart, one of the things, Val, he talked to us about we got to clean things up in game two from game one. The turnovers so far, six in the first half. He'll take that as a win. Yeah, that's the, the most important stat on the screen for Coach Smart is the, the low turnover number. You know, he's getting six more in this half. So that's important. Continue to take care of the basketball. You end up with 12. You cut it down by six from last game. They're going to get assists just with the pace and, and the way that they play. They've got 13, 13 assists already at 18 last game. Taking care of that basketball is what Coach wanted to see. And Blackford turning over Central Michigan and Cam Jones. We were talking during the break. Where is Cam Jones? I mean, scoring by committee? Yeah, but Cam Jones says, I want to join the committee here. First point of the evening. Great read on the skip pass with the pick and roll by Tyler Toler. Miller playing for three fouls. Attacked the rim right away, but he rimmed it off. Hit the front of the iron. Look for Central Michigan to get a lot more aggressive on the offensive backboard. Two tries there. Empty trip. Marquette the other way. Poland. Stop and stop. Stayed with it. Pink oh, top. Tough. One of three lefties on Shaka Smart's team, and the southpaw puts it in for oh, two more. With his ability to pass out of the pick and roll, if he shoots a high percentage of three, like he did at George Mason, he's made two in this game already. Now you can't go under on those screens. Now he becomes even more hard to handle in that situation. Foul on Kolek. Harding was cherry picking the other way. Tyler said, I'm going to make you earn it at the stripe. And that over the top pass was something the coaches and staff emphasized against the press earlier today. And for Coach, they've gone in the locker room and just talked about one possession at a time if you're Central Michigan. Right. There's no 20 point plays, they're establishing identity. This is year two for Coach Barbie putting his fingerprint on it to get these guys to play the way he wants them to play. That's all they're focused on right now. First point of the evening for Marcus Harding, the sophomore out of Toronto. Polek, floater from 12. It doesn't go. Reload, batted in the air, volleyball match, and they'll go the other way, foul on Marquette. Good. Three on Oso. That's his third. Yeah, that's an issue. Coach Cousins. Ben Gold sums it up. Gold with the freshman. I like this kid. He's got the ability to pick and pop. Missed the three in the first half, but it looked good. He's not afraid of contact. He's going to grow into his body. But they've got high hopes for Ben Gold. You were saying? Passing lane steal and the foul. Ben Gold using that big wingspan there. As Taylor gets whistled for the foul. He can help spread the floor, floor with this length foul. And he can move, right? The coach is really, he's recruited mobile big guys. He's got a skill set. He won't handle the ball like Oso just yet, but he can pitch, pop, shoot the basketball, and he can move his feet. He shoots it here. He banks it in for a three. Ben Gold knocking it home. Marquette by 25. That's a big moment for him. He did all the dirty work. Another turnover. And Ben Gould got that T.O., got the foul, and then right back and into his hand. And it's a different dynamic 
he's not rolling to the basket like Oso would. He's going to pop and space the court. He can shoot that shot or reverse the floor. So it gives you a different look. Oso goes out of the game with three fouls, but now you got to guard something different when Gold comes into the game. Each one run. Marquette, again, out of the shoots, out of the locker room, playing with a purpose. Same set. Coaches draw it up, and sometimes it works, Val. Because of his ability to shoot the three, now you got to play the line. He goes back door for a high percentage shot. Eagles running it back up here to start the second half. And Lavelle, the eye candy is the dunk. That's nice. That's fun. But the pass from Tyler Kolek, that's just fantastic. He's up to nine assists now. Eleven is career high. He's the best passing point guard in the Big East. His addition is elite. He's looking for Ben Gold for a three on that play. They play the line. Great cut by Ben. Elite pass and vision by Tyler Kolek. Shot to Smart, tells Taylor, be a five-star leader. He leads by example. He's a vocal guy. I mean, complete package if you want a leader. That's number 11. And he talked about that earlier today, Bob. When I asked him, what did you focus on this offseason? His shooting was the number one thing. But then he said his leadership. Using a couple key guys, he knew he'd be one of the veterans coming back and have to step up vocally and lead by example. Ben Gold almost had another dunk. That'll go to the line. Sarzua. Got a chunk of Ben before he went up. Ben Gold, his college visit to Milwaukee and Marquette came during their win over Villanova. Downtown of five stories for him. If that doesn't sell you, well, it did sell Ben. But they've got great environment here, Marquette. Fans come out. The students are out here tonight. They show up at, when they're at the Pfizer's. It's always a fun place to play. Not for the opponent, but you love the environment. Big East basketball games, there's nothing like it. And they've got one of the best environments there is in the league. Omax on the foul. The reach in that time. That's his second. And, and this is what Coach Smart is going to continue to talk to them about this entire second half. Not letting up. Don't relax. Continue to execute the way that they executed the first half, offensively and defensively. Oh, nice pass. Interior feed. Miller into Pavret. Bucket full of chips. Oh, a big hole to dig here in the second half. Bang goes wide open. No. In front of the iron. Miller driving on Mitchell. Step back. Oh, wow. Looks like Brook Lopez when the Bucks are playing downtown. Yeah. He's a little old school. He has great, he's got great boys about him. Miller with eight. Could be more. Foul trouble has hampered his offensive game. Oh, look, trying to shake off his defender. Finds goal underneath. Nice. Twisting time and Nice to see the pump fake. Great fundamental. Show it to him and give it back. And then put it in on the other side. From the chips bench. Darren Zua. Cross court kick. Attacking. Ten goal disrupting. And a foul. Here go against Kolek. But Marquette letting off, letting their foot off the gas pedal. Hardly, folks. They're up big here in the second half. Uh, Brainerd Lavelle 
Jordan, our crew here in Milwaukee. Now, you coach international players like Ben Gold. There's something about him. They have that it factor, even when they're a freshman. Yeah, he, he, he's IQ, mobility, agility, and versatility. Inside, out, you see him making the three-point shot and then going down low. Great pass from Tyler Colin, but showing the pump fake on one side. Just found fundamental basketball. Coach Martin, again, has high hopes for this young man. The, the first May 3 was big for his confidence, and you can just see him kind of break out of a shell. And you always know when the teammates are going crazy on the bench for him, they're happy for him to finally get one down and take a deep breath. Right. He put a lot of pressure on himself to step up, especially as a young player. So it's great to see his teammates rooting for him to finally put nine points on the board, knock down a three, and be a contributor in his second college basketball game of his career. Ben was asked during media day here in Milwaukee, how have you adjusted to life here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, America? And he said, it was a little bit of an adjustment at first. He, you know, did some overseas work, so it wasn't his first time in the U.S., but just getting used to the culture. And it took some, some doing, he admitted, but things are starting to come around, becoming comfortable. Just wait till it snows here. That's probably coming tomorrow. I think New Zealand might get a little bit of snow. No? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get my globe out next time. Great set here. Nice pass. Oh, Jones, good find. Superior find to Omax. Sneaking in under underneath for the dunk. How did he find him? I mean, that was... Aren't you a sliver of an opening? Aren't you impressed with Cam Jones? Again, lead the return and score. Right? They, he scored 10 points out of the game in game one. And then, Strap was really focused on him. But he's let the game come to him tonight. It's everybody else. And he's okay with that. I think that is a huge maturity step for a player like him who can put up 20, 30 points in a basketball game. Ball on Ross. Chase was chasing after... The Chippewa player, Bass, who hit the deck. So. This is for the contact, and yeah, some perspiration. Skid mark left there near the free throw line. Students appreciate the servanthood of uh, the towel by. They appreciate everything. They got they have food trucks, tacos out front tonight. Miller. Marquette now with Oso and Ben Jones. Or ben Gold, I'm sorry. Out of the game here. We're well, going to call Miller for the hook, and that's four on him. Critical to lose number two again with that much time on the clock. Small ball here for Marquette. No, no true center in the game. So now the floor is spaced. You got attacking drivers, quickness. See if Central Michigan can keep them in front, keep them out of the paint with this lineup. Got one. Draw to the bucket. Kick it. Prosper. Kick it. Ross. Launch it. Great possession. Great possession. And that's what happens when you pull your center out of the game. Now it's driving kick basketball. Great job by the Marquette players of landing on two feet. Good balance. Using the pivot to find out the teammate. Great possession. Ross with seven. Marquette controls the lead. Back up to big numbers again. Well, he's a Michigan with a little bit of the same medicine. Just missed the open look. Skyetta had a look. Jones does too. Read on Taylor. Got to get back. Bass looking for the bump. We'll just get her bucket. And that's where Sean Jones, that would be on in film tomorrow, right? Cam shoots the shot, your point guard responsibilities on the lift of that shot is to be on his way back to protect the basket in transition. I'm sure we'll hear about that with tomorrow with Coach Martin Phil. Look at you coaching from the table. Got the missed the three and stay with Marquette. Again. When Marquette is at its best, Val, it's the passing when it's supreme like this. And the, and the control events, you bring a crowd, attack, drive, kick, and just be willing to share the ball, find it over teammate.
Omax gets a breather. Marquette really small. Just take a barrel in there now to provide some length. And back down. The kick to Jones. And nobody home there except Chippewa. Sky head of the other way. Floater. Nope. Pogret missed the eight footer. John Jones launching. Rounds it home. If he could make that one again, he and Colin, the guys with the ball in their head the most, nice finish. If you can't go under their screen, it opens up a whole new world for that guy. I'm on a rock. Big time. He pumps, draws the defender. I'm going up for three, and now on the drive he gets the two. But watch again the nice. aftermath underneath. Nice. And I love how they're playing off two feet. Marquette doing a great job. You watch them in practice. You watch them in their walkthroughs. Emphasizing it, especially today with the turnovers that they had last game. And their players are taking it to heart. The sound fundamental hoop. Oh, a breath there. Something sweet on the drive. Missed by Marley. Ross the other way. Why not? Not this time. I love Coach Martin. Love that one. That's one of those. If it goes in, it's a great shot. <laughs> Interior feed, Harding muscles it into two. This is firehouse basketball right now. End to end, no one letting up. Coach, we're going to have a timeout here in a second. Coach is going to want to talk about it. You can't get sloppy here if you're Marquette. Air ball there by Marley. Yeah, it's, it's trending back into the sloppiness right now because both sides are playing fast. Yeah. So, so now the last three possessions, it's been one pass or no pass, right? So think about drive kick, drive kick, wide open shot, which is what Coach wants. He doesn't want those last three possessions. Marley the bucket and the foul. He'll have the line when we return. Marquette heading in the right direction all night long tonight. Versus Oso, who you going to be out on the perimeter driving the ball. Purdue's got a freshman point guard they're starting. Can he handle Braden Smith? Can he handle this Marquette pressure right, that they're going to apply to him? But really, really looking forward to watching that bounce right. Already missed the end one free throw, so it stays 71 46. Goals and Eagles. That goal is the right way. Lost the handle. I'm gonna try to thread the needle inside. There's the back cut again. Prosper goes up strong, hammer to the floor. It's just such an easy read for him to make. Tyler Kohler come off. He's always got he's got his head up. He's got he's got tremendous pace. Sees it on that one. He actually nodded ahead at Omax to, to, to get him to make the cut that he was supposed to make. Look who's back. Kevin Miller playing with four fouls. Tony Barbie saying, it's now or never. 11.34 to go. He's going to have to. They've got some good opportunities here. They have knocked him down, like, recently. But they've gotten good shots. Driving and kicking the basketball. Continue to stay on the offensive glass if you're there. And to do good things, Miller has to be in there. So Miller is here. He's a huge part of it. I'd love to see him and Jesse Z. Zuma out there together. See that that can create such a Creating. And then throwing it away. Igadaro, you saw him, right? The flash bell. And as soon as Bass got underneath there, Oso comes swooping in, and that caused the TO. It's the mobility factor again. Coach Marks, the, the groups that he's coached that are playing, this is an identity game. There's that man. 
This is an identity game for Coach. Just the way we want to play. We didn't do what we, we wanted to do first game out. Go back to the film room. Get back on the practice court. Make some corrections and establish who we want to be consistently. Will it lead to wins consistently? That, that's not the point with these early games. It is playing the way we want to play consistently. Marquette gets the turnover. Marquette gets the dunk. Punishment and pain when you cough it up against the Golden Eagle. Three ball from Bass goes. Good hustle. Bass on the deck. Got the basketball back. And Amara Simpson over there. Said hold up, perspiration. Watch slipping out of the screen on the roll. Tyler with the one-handed off the bounce, but a great slip. Look at getting separation out of that screen is something you work on in practice by how quickly you can set that screen and get out of there. And also with his mobility and Tyler Colet combined that with his vision, really hard to guard those guys in the pick and roll. That was assist number 11 for Tyler. Ties his career high. Got eight points, so another bucket gives him a double double. Not a bad day at the offense. Steele here, Mitchell goes down. No, Zarzula triple. And there it is as Coach Barbie has those two guys on the court together. I think they'll have to do this more than they won't in games, especially at the back level when they get the comp. Those two guys, those two guards on the court together. Or back door assist would have been number 12, but kick OB. So triple is get it. And again, the perspiration. It's warm in here. I mean, Lamar Simpson, the official, he came over to the table here where Val and I are stationed, and he looked at us and said, Are you guys hot? Yeah, this building has been jumping, and it's warm in here, folks. And the coach is now. You're finding out about your team. So now you look up and you see Jesse Zazua, Kevin Miller, Reggie Bass on the court together. Which is something that I think that coaches put this lineup on to see if we can take care of the basketball a little better, create some offense, two of our better scores and our point guard all out there. A little bit smaller, but quickness and shiftiness are great to the table. Our get bench line a 10 second count. We play on. Six to shoot. Turn it over. Great job by Oso doing his speed. Chase Ross. On the attack. Bumped and fouled. It'll go against Taylor. That's four on him. Taylor out. Marley in for the chips. Around the horn we go, and then Kolick for three. Hits the heel. Great set on the baseline out of bounds. Coach, I like the shot by Tyler Cole. We stand aggressive, hunting some shots. Speaking of aggressive, and the reward. Ross on the flush. Man, he is old school, isn't he? Nice tough get created. Pull it. Hook shot on the pass. Ross rattled the halfway down. Who wouldn't have it? Stolen by Prosper. And wipe it away. That was foul before the dunk, but give the students something to scream and yell about. A little too much right there by Kevin Miller. You see the speed. And Chase Ross. Big finish from the young fella. You know what I like about Ross and Jones for young players? They don't have to, to score to impact the game for Coach Smart. They can come in and apply pressure defensively, contribute without 
and having pressure on the score the basketball. Chase has 11 points tonight, but his defense, Sean Jones coming in, his pickup point, his defense, they'll be able to contribute consistently on that end of the court, I think, to Marquette. Bowling, strong into the paint, fouled, Marley going to get with him. And all the fouls starting to pile up for the Chippewas. Marquette in the bonus. And Kolick to shoot a pair. Here comes the freshman Sean Jones. What Shaq is to your point, though, with a guy like Sean Jones, right now he's learning the point guard IQ portion of his college career. He knows he's got the wheels, and he can use those wheels to be disruptive. But now fine-tuning the young man, the vision part, running of the show, those are things that will come. The speed is a bonus. Marley missed the three. Jones, no. Cole chases it down for a reset. Also has a mismatch here. Big on small. Great pass. Cole wow. kick. Oh, Max, no. He should get a half of something on the stat sheet for making the right play over and over and over. One would think, right? My goodness. Imagine if some of these others went down for him. He can't make a ball, but he continues to make the right play. Foul call on Chase Ross. On the trip, Tyler Kolek. Market students having a good old time on campus tonight as the home team leads it by 22 here in the second half. Shaka Smart, this is how you replace a Justin Lewis. You don't ask one guy to do what Lewis did. You say, we need to score more by committee. There's your committee. There's your blueprint. Now, that's the, the biggest question coming into the season for Marquette. How are we going to put points on the board, right? We know Cam Jones, who's not on this, who's not on this graphic right now. We know he can score the basketball. He had those big games last year. Tyler Kohler gets done it at George Mason. Can he do it at Marquette? But now you have all these other guys that are stepping up their level. With David Joplin, freshman of sophomore year, coming in on the bench contributing. You got freshmen in there with Ben Gold and Olivier. You know, Omax just contributing in a number of different ways. And that's going to be my best part. They could have a different leading scorer every night, every game this season. And I think Coach Smart would be, be totally okay with that. It takes the pressure off to Val. Rather than saying to one or two guys, look, you guys got to score a bunch more. Instead, you're going around the locker room and saying, up your scoring average by two. And then you two, and you two, and you two. And before you know it, the twos right. all add up. And, and a big part of that for them is their defense creating offense, right? A lot of these are runouts. They right now have 25 fast break points. So some of them are easy baskets. Right? If they get caught in a half court game with someone, then who can create at that point in time, right? Their defense will create a lot for them, but that won't be every night. You're going to play Villanova. The tempo is going to change. You're going to play Providence. They're going to change defenses, right? The tempo changes. So now the next step for this group is continue this, but also be able to execute and operate the half court by some score. Little run here by the chip was still a 20 point hole, but they've shown flashes here. What they'll do and what they'll do well in that play. Jones the scoop. Goal. Trying to keep that one alive. Great. At this time, the best. Third try a charm? No, but a foul. Sean Jones to the line. And, and if you're Coach Smart, that last huddle, look, it's, if you take the second half score alone, it's 29 to 25. 
So Central Michigan's playing better. All right, Marquette had he had got up big in the first half. But Marquette looked to come out of that timeout. You see him through a couple offensive rebounds in one possession, picking the energy back up. Sean Jones went to school in Ohio, but has family members here in Milwaukee. About 50 family members. So he's got the uh, home court advantage in here at Marquette. Tough kid, Gahanna Lincoln. Great high school program and tradition that he's coming from. Hits the freebies. Or 6.30 remaining in regulation here in Milwaukee. Now Zua, oh, scoop over the head. Crafty. He's got some craftiness to his game. Kind of old school. And Jones strikes the pole. Harding out of the scrum. Around the screen, white shirts, and then uh, go away. And if you're Coach Smart here, look, to be able to have 77 points on the board with Cam Jones being one for six from the floor is is something that you had a question about coming into this season. So I think this is a good thing that Cam's struggling and everybody else has because you know this won't happen to him every night. Well, like you said, Ben. Somebody, pretty much every night, different guy will be leading the charge. So this isn't unusual as Jones drives. I mean, I mean the ticker on that kid. It is unquestioned. Taylor going against Joplin. David disrupted it. Cam to David. Joplin launches. Pretty nice punch. And timeout on the floor. Now oh, again, we had moisture. And, and you guys about the IQ of the internet. Watch the tap rebound. Big goal doesn't grab that ball, but he taps it to Cam Jones. Right, knowing his, his guard can get out and start the fast break. And then just great boy. David Johnson, who passed on a good look in the first half, says, I'm not passing on any more good looks here in the second half. Yeah, he's stopping Meyer to two because he knew from the release he's got a good chance. But I, I, I love the IG player. They go, can't grab it, tap it to your teammate, and let's start the break. And, and now, Central Michigan, they're hearing footsteps. They're seeing the ghosts you talked about. That was Miller, a pass to, I think, his head coach. It's like, it's like having the yips in golf. You just start to think that there's someone there for the steal. Joplin! All smiles for the kid from Brookfield, Wisconsin. Somebody must have told him in the huddle, hey, that. Do what you do. You're not passing up open looks. That's not you. <laughs> so she's not turning those down now. But I love the confidence. She's bouncing back from an open five nights the other night. Right. Going is going to have to have a roll on the score ball. Stepping up. In and out. Pinballed around. Marquette basketball. The thing with David is that he showed flashes of this last year. He made some big buckets in big games in big moments, Val. And that's why Shaka Smart loves the upside because he sees that and says, you know what? That can translate to a bunch of big buckets in bunches. Yeah. And, and, and talking with DeAndre Hans, who's on their staff, and there's Job again. Oh my gosh! Bang. David Joplin! <laughs> He's feeling himself right now. He should! Five triples for Joplin. Another steal, Marquette. Stolen back pass. Oh. Foul. Oh. On the undercut, but David Joplin, white hot 
from outside the arc. Marquette by 30. But also the confidence. You can see it in his eyes. Big time confidence coming up that his coaches want him to look for these shots. His teammates are finding him. Coming out of a tough game last game, but you see it. Who's out at five for eight for three? And he wants to be that person with that role to score the basketball. Talking to assistant coach DeAndre Haynes, who, who's a tremendous coach, a future head coach. What he talked about with, with David was just consistency. Right? Every day in practice, showing up, bringing the consistency to the table. And as he continues to grow and establishes that, he can be one of the better scorers, just like Coach Smart said, in this in the Big East Conference. Shaka Smart admits he probably coaches David Joplin harder than anybody else on the roster. But he does that because David Joplin has more to give, the fire in the belly. Trying to bring that out of this young man. We're seeing it tonight. Yeah. It's, it's coming. And that's the joy of, of coaching, to be honest about it to see something in, in players sometimes they don't see in themselves or don't see how to get it and they have to follow the process stick to the process you get to help them understand here's what it's, it's going to take to be the player you're going to be the player you want to be one day but here's what it's going to take and help them walk down that path another one no not that was a heat check it was <laughs> it was Points I got in trouble for a few of those back, in the, back when I was a player. No, you? At Butler? <laughs> Come on. Marquette's going to get W number two of the season. Nice extra. Good basketball there. Good swing from Reggie Bass. And Zarzua, he's a talented scorer. He is. Good. Since coach, coach has done a, a good job putting this roster together. If he walked into it last year, I think they've got three returning players. So bringing in a ton of new faces, and they're going to find their rotations, find their lineups. They're going to be a tough team to deal with when that conference play comes around. Prosper going into the paint with violence. Gets thrown to the floor. Foul. And they call it on... They call it on Zarzua. They changed it from Taylor to Zarzua. And that's three on Jesse. So Omax. The line for Marquette. He's in double digits with 11. Chase Ross with 11. Joplin, as we mentioned, 20. Big old 20 burger. Next up, tough one. West Lafayette, Purdue Boilermakers. And back home for LIU. And on we go, getting ready for Big East play. The East Bell, as you know, going to be a, a beast again. And talented teams and contrasting styles as well. You got to adjust from one team to the other because there's so many different teams in play this year. It's the uh, it's the front part of the league. It's the tough part of the league. It's what the players come here for. Tremendous coaches. Follow call, call there on Sean Jones. But, yeah, this conference is just... You can't afford to bring your B game when you're playing in the Big East Conference. And that's not lip service, right? I mean, it, it is true. You've been in the trenches, and you know. You can play the team in last place, and they're bringing it, and they're ready to spring the upset. I, I, exactly. You know, I think, obviously, Craig is all the early hype and the preseason favorite, and Coach Mack is, is, has put his imprint on that program, and, and they've got the pieces. Really impressed with Villanova out of the gates to be able to, for Caleb Daniels to step up 24 points. Kyle Neptune getting his first win without Justin Moore. Watching Brandon Slater, his activity like they're, they're, they're going Villanova just like Villanova's always done, it looks like. And then you got Xavier and Providence. Coach Cooley's going to figure it out with new guys. Sean Miller back. Uh, their point guard situation with Desmond Claude and Boom. You know, it's going to be fun to watch all these teams grow and develop here in the non-conference as they head into conference play. 
basketball junkies, you better put on full alert. Don't miss anything he's watching. Winding down to two minutes to go here in Milwaukee. Don't to go in the corner. This is a one hand flush. Hey. Coach Smart, I told you what he said about this young man. That three he hit that in the first half, you saw his confidence rise. Now he's getting backdoor dumps, attacking closeouts. My goodness, young fella. That had something on it right there. And a little scream, exclamation point by Penn Gold. Penn's kind of kind of quiet, kind of cerebral off the court. But man, that brought out a little celebration and a smile. And you've got to appreciate the students that haven't left. And they are hyped up about a play like that. <laughs> they called after all of that. They called a bench technical on Marquette. A little too much jubilation, a little too much celebration, and there was some water still on the floor, so the official said, we, Coach, we got to call that. It, it won't wipe the smile off of Penn's face, however. Yeah. I'll ask Coach Smart if that's a tech they're going to have to run for. They're easy to swallow, <laughs> the Val, when you're 28, right? But you just, you like the... Look, Shaka Smart is, it's high energy, it is aggressive, he talks about multiple efforts, he talks about playing with violence, and when you see these guys, the way that David Johnson is way much more aggressive tonight, you see how Ben Gold is still attacking the rim with two minutes to go in the basketball game. Now watch the bench at the top of your screen. Celebrating water, oh boy. We've had a mishap. Get OSHA here and clean that up. And the officials didn't want to tamp down kids celebrating, but you know, it was like, look. And Shaq is over there saying, okay, yeah. behave, boys. Yeah, you see him talking to, to O back. I think it was his water bottle, or Zach Mitchell, right from his water bottle. We got that from the court. Oh, don't look at the tape. <laughs> Tomorrow, let's figure out the guilty party. Yeah, everybody's pointing at the other person right now. You did it. No, you did it. That's Caleb Hodgson. First action for him gets the bucket here. Triples head back home. They've got their home opener against Eastern Illinois on the 13th. Marquette, we showed you where they're going against Purdue on the 15th. Goal for three. Nope. Ross going all out to try to get that four. Ozua fade away the triple. Almost. Sean Jones up bust up. Jumping right now. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Jumping with 23. Taylor 3. And then quick timeout. This is summer. Okay. And Great. let these students give David Joplin a little more love. Get these guys in. They're on the scout team. Watch the, the walkthrough earlier. Coach Smart was coaching these guys like they were the first team. Yeah. They, they messed up a couple of details on the Central Michigan offensive scout, and he got after them like they were the first teamers. So it's great to see them rewarded. Get in the game. Though their teammates love nothing more than getting a big lead like this and giving them the opportunity to get some minutes. It's walk on central for the Golden Eagles. To close this one out. Lucas for three. That's good. By the chair. No hesitation there. He's trying to get the box score. Well, of course. <laughs> the job of every walk on, right? <laughs> On 
Kind of good coming out. The uh, Alma Dwyer Center tonight for the Golden Eagles. Finish flush. There's your chariot on the Sunday. Kian Ntzire with the highlight reel. Why not? Paint in a triple for Skyetta. The students want a hunger here. And the chat says you're not going to get it. But thanks for all the noise. They Class embraced. Classes. They embraced it, Bell. Playing a game on campus, having only students in the building. They brought it, and the team brought it as well, right out of the chute. Yeah, Marquette hitting on all cylinders tonight. Right. I think that's the vision for this Marquette basketball team. Establishing consistency every day that coach wants, but if they're playing like that, sharing the ball, applying the pressure on defense, it's going to be very tough to deal deal with. Fun way to play. Great, great game to watch. Great response. Getting better from game one to game two for Coach Martin's ball club. Lavelle Jordan, newbie behind the mic. How do you like sitting over here? You know what? I don't have to go to the press conference and answer any questions, so. <laughs> Good answer. Good job, Val. That's all from Milwaukee, where tonight's final score is Marquette 97 and Central Michigan 73. For Lavelle Jordan, I'm Bob Brainer, and our terrific crew here in Milwaukee. Thank you for watching. You've been tuned in to College Hoops on FS2.